Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss geeks or geeks problem of the day and today's problem is painting the fence and it is a medium level problem. So the problem says that we have been given a fence with n posts and k colors and we have to find the number of ways of painting the fence so that not more than two consecutive posts have the same colors and obviously we have to print down the module in this part 9 plus 7. Now this problem is a very uh, good extension of yesterday's problem. Yesterday's problem was a bit simpler than this one and uh, for this problem you will have to think a little bit although like uh, the code will look uh, somewhat similar but uh, the problem is a little bit different. So let us discuss what was yesterday's problem first. So it says it said that we only had two types of colors 0 is 1 right and the condition was we cannot have two one together right this was yesterday's problem now today's problem is says that let's say we have n uh, cells now we have k colors instead of just two colors and moreover um, uh, like at maximum two adjacent cells can have the same color now there is not a constraint on a specific color like there was on one yesterday but now there can be two same colors together but the third color cannot be the same as well right so this is not allowed and it can be two two but the third one cannot be two as well right so at maximum two consecutive same colors are allowed and the third one has to be different right so we will think of it this like in the dp manner so let me just define the dp states first and then i will explain the problem so let us say dp of ij and let, uh, let us say before even before that let us discuss this particular sample test case. So what they have said is the value of n is 3 and the value of k is 2. Now you see let us say we denote the green by 1 and the white cells by 0. So they say that this is a valid configuration. Why? Because there are two consecutive cells that are of the same color but the third cell that is after it is different. Now 0 0 1 is also valid. Similarly 1 0 1 is also valid and 1 0 0 is valid and uh, 0 1 0 is valid and 0 1 1 is also valid. So here are 6 configurations that satisfy the conditions. So 0 0 0 and 1 1 1 are not valid cases. Right. So these are not valid cases. Now you can see that uh, in this particular uh, sample test case the answer was 6. So how can we solve this particular problem? Let us say we have dp of ij. So what is dp of ij going to denote? The second dimension is again going to be of size 2. Right. So i i is denoting the current position in the array right so i is denoting my current position in the array and since j is of size 2 there can only be two values either 0 or 1 so 0 denotes let's say let's talk about one first so one denotes that the previous two elements are same that means the uh, i minus 1 and i minus 2 elements are similar right they are exactly the same and this means that the previous two elements are not same right so what i can do is this can be i minus 1 and i minus 2 right so this is what my j index or my second dimension is denoting so the first uh, thing is if the value of j is 0 that means my previous two elements are not same. So let us say I have this cell, this cell and this cell. Now I have x here, I have y here that means these two elements are not same then I am free to put any value in this particular cell. I can put z, I can put x or I can put even y right. This is these are my choices. Now let us talk about when j is equals to 1. When j is equals to 1 that means the previous two elements are similar x and x let us say right. So I cannot put x here right I will have to put some other variable for now let us say y right. So if there were a total of k choices I will be left with only k minus 1 choices for this particular cell right. So this is something I want to tell you. Now how do we form the dp transitions? So We'll, we are going to form the dp transitions for let us say j is equal to 0 first. j is equal to 0 means that the previous two elements are not same. So let us say, let us say this is x 
and this is y and I decide to put a y here as well, right. So, for the next element that is the i plus 1th index, the previous two elements are going to be same, right. So, if this is i and I decide to put the same element that was in the last position at i minus 1. So, for i plus 1, these previous two elements are going to be the same. So, now here I will have to write that dp of dp of ij is equals to dp of i plus 1 and now the previous two elements are same. So, I have written it like this, right. So, I have taken the same element that was present at i plus 1 and for the next index the previous two elements will become same. So, I have to mark this as 1. Now, if I choose any other element other than y, other than this particular y, if I choose any other element, then my total number of choices here in this case would be k minus 1. So, I will have to take plus k minus 1 choices and dp of i plus 1. Since now the previous two elements are not same, so I have to take 0, right. So, and again I can take the mod of this whole value. Let me just put this into the packets. Right. So, I hope that you guys were able to understand this particular part. What I am knowing is, I am currently at position i. Let us say the element at i plus 1 was y. So, I decided to choose the same element. So, I only have one choice in this particular case. But if I choose this element for the position i plus 1, the previous two elements are going to be the same. So, that is why I write dp of i plus 1 and 1. Right. The other case will be when I choose any other element other than y. So, if I have total k elements, I will be left with k minus 1 choices. So, for those k minus 1 choices, I will have this configuration where at dp of i plus 1, my previous two elements were not same. So, that is why I choose 0 here, right. Now, talking about when j is equals to 1, right. For j is equals to 1, you obviously do not have any choices because you cannot take the same element that was taken previously. So, it is a case like so, let me just erase a little bit of this. So, let us say this was x, this was x as well. So, you cannot take x again. So, that is why you have to take any other element, let us say y. So, if you have a total of k elements, you can choose k minus 1 elements here. So, what you will essentially do here is, so this is let us say 1 and this is, this is let us say 0. So, dp of i1 will be equals to uh, k minus 1 choices into dp of i plus 1 and 0, right. And obviously, you can take the mod after all like this, right. Now, what happens, uh, since you cannot take x here, you are going to take any other value other than x, right. So, you have k minus 1 choices for it. So, k minus 1 is here. Now, since these two elements are different, the element at position i plus i minus 1 and at position i, these two elements are different. So, at position i plus 1, the previous two elements are going to be different. That is why I have to take dp of i plus 1, 0, right. Now, coming on to the base case, there will be two base cases, one for the 0th index and one for the nth index. Since at the nth index, I have exhausted all the tiles or all the positions, my answer is going to be 1. Or it is denoting that I found a valid configuration. Now, at position 0, since there is no previous element, I can take any k choices here, right. And even after taking any k choices, my previous two elements will not be the same, right. So, what I am trying to say is that for the first, let us say these are some elements, right. So, for the, this particular position, this particular position, there are no two elements, there is only one single element. So, even if I have k choices, I can choose any element here, my dp of i for this particular position will always have to be dp of i0, right, because there are no two previous elements only, right, there is only one element, there are no two elements. So, this value, the j index for position 1 can never be equals to 1, right. So, that is what I wanted to say that you will have to deal this case when the position is 0 separately. So, you cannot write it like this, right, in this particular manner, right, because dp of, dp of position 1, 1 will never exist. What was the condition for this j index to be 1? I said that the previous two elements have to be the same. But if I talk about index 1, two elements do not exist before it, that is why this condition will never be true. So, 
you will have to write this condition separately. Let me just write it for you. So, dp of 0, dp of for uh, i is equal to 0. So, dp of 0, 0 is going to be k into dp of i plus 1, 0, right? And obviously, you can take the mod. So, I hope that you guys were able to understand this. Why for position i is equal to 0, we cannot write it like, like this, right? So, th for j is equal to 0, this was the general case, but for i is equal to 0 as well, when both of them are 0, you have to write it like this, right? This is a special case. Why? Because for position 1, two elements will not exist before it, right? So, this is one special case that you will have to take care about, right? Now, you can easily form your recursive function from this particular method and replacing all the dp on the right hand side, you can replace it with your helper function. Right, you can memorize the solution and it will work. Now, uh, talking about the iterative solution, I hope that you guys were able to, will be able to do the recursive solution. It is very simple. I have already written the transition states. These will all, these will be the, all the transitions, and you just have to call your helper function instead of writing dp on the right hand side. Right, so all of these dp elements, you can replace it with your helper functions. Right, now talking about the iterative solution. Uh, Again, just like the yesterday's problem, you can see that the current state i is depending on the state i plus 1, right? That means I have to compute i plus 1 before computing i, right? So, that is exactly what I am going to do here. So, uh, you see, I have formed a base case when n is equal to 1, I can just directly return k, right? So, this will be my base case for the whole problem. Now, I have a dp, double dimensional dp vector of size n plus 1 cross 2 and I have initialized my mod value. Now, I am going from position i minus 1 till greater than 0. You have to observe two things here. The first thing is my for loop is in reverse order and it is not computing for the value or the position 0, right? Because I said I will have to compute it separately, right? So, now what I will have to do is uh, again, why this is in reverse order? Uh, because i plus 1 will have to be computed before computing i. So, dp of i0 is equal to k minus 1 into dp of i plus 1 0. So, this is what I have written here k minus 1 into dp of i plus 1 0 plus dp of i plus 1 1. So, this is dp of i plus 1 1, right. Again, you can take mod operation in between here and then you can take the whole mod, right. Now, dp of i1 will be equal to k minus 1 into dp of i plus 1 0. So, k minus 1 into dp of i plus 1 0. Now, at the end, I can just return dp of 0 0 as k into dp of i dp of 1 0. So, here you can see dp of 0 0 is k into dp of i plus 1 0. So, i plus 1 basically if i is equal to 0 then this whole will be 1 only right. So, I can write it like this as well right. So, this was the whole solution and now you know why we are solving this problem in this particular manner. Talking about the time and space complexity, again you can see that space complexity will be n into 2. So, this is roughly n only and the time complexity is also n because we have this one single for loop here, right. So, uh, there were some issues again just like yesterday's problem, I do not know why. So, if you see that this code, these codes are given clearly. So, if I open this particular thing and you see this is the same code that I have written right now, I have made no changes and if I open this one, this is getting accepted, right. So, I do not know whether this is some issue with the, the GOG server or their uh, like uh, timings, but uh, the same code is getting accepted sometimes and sometimes it is getting TLE. So, if you get TLE, I highly recommend you to submit it a couple of times. I am submitting it right in front of you. So, you see this time it got accepted. Again, let, let me just submit this. So, we will see what happens. So, you see this time it got TLE. So, I am not changing the code, I am just submitting it again and again and sometimes it is getting accepted, sometimes it is not. We know for sure that our complexity is correct and we know that it is working under the desired complexity. This mod operation might be something that is adding a constant factor that is why it is getting accepted sometimes and sometimes not. The other than that, uh, I believe the correct code is correct, you can uh, like uh, this approach will be the final approach. Right. So, I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really, really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach much more people like you to keep solving new problems. Right. So, that is it for today. Till the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe. Bye-bye.